Hey, how y'all doing? I'm back with another video on how I make my pocket knives. Um, took a little longer than I originally expected to um, get to this video because my mother, she fell off of a step stool and banged herself up pretty badly. So I had to stop and take care of her. And thankfully she's starting to get better. So I've been able to get a little bit of shop time here, but just not quite um, full blast yet, I guess. Anyways, um, I've got all these heat treated here, and as you can tell, um, this one and this one I haven't cleaned up yet. Um, but I've got the two country gentlemen's cleaned up, and this trapper, and this one close way back, I have a 220 grit um, surface ground finish on them, and these two country gentlemen I've been working on doing a 400 grit um, finish with WD-40 on my flat surface there. Um, that puts a really nice um, finish. That's actually what I do when I hand sand. The fellow knife maker um, give me that tip. So I'll pass it on to you. WD-40 compared to water is a major upgrade. <laughs> but anyways, um, of course, once I get this one cliff and this slim trapper um, cleaned up, I will be back and I will start showing you the process I go through to start getting the blade and back springs um, fit up together. So I will see you shortly. Here real quick while I'm thinking of it, I wanted to thank Heinz Farms for shouting me out in one of his previous videos there. I've known that old rascal for, oh, it must be going on 20 years now I reckon. Uh, He's a farmer up in Indiana there, and he shows working on their equipment and whatnot on their on his channel. And he has a couple antique tractors that he works on in a spare time. And the last one he drug in was an old John Deere B. Um, so if you enjoy farming videos, um, he's definitely worth checking out. So I just wanted to thank him here real quick before we move on. Okay, I've got everything cleaned up where I want it now. Um, and the next steps will be getting the tang area. I think this one can see it. I've got scrub lines on it. Um, ground down to um, really close to these scrub lines. And, of course, it's like I've showed before. I get the pattern on there. Put the pin in it. And line the blade part up on the blade where I need it, and then I scribe around it. Uh, nothing complicated. But for me, I have to keep it simple. <laughs> okay, and on this one here, as you can see, I've already ground down, and of course, everything's still pretty proud. Um, but that was on a um, one out 36 grip belt, so that's pretty rough still yet. Yeah. There we can see. See, that's still real rough. Um, so as I work it on in, I'm going to be using a 120 to begin with um, to get close. And then when I start getting close, then I will move up to a 400 grip belt. But the first thing I'm going to need to work on is the open position. Okay, and on the back spring, I've already got the walk. In this area over here towards the butt of the knife, I have a um, 400 belt finish on that area. And if you can tell a little bit difference, the walk is shinier. I put a 400 grit belt finish on it. And then I um, went to my flat surface with 400 grit and WD-40. And that puts a nicer finish on it, which I will... Before final assembly, I'll do the same to the rest of the back spring. And of course, in the dip here, I've not did anything. Because I don't want to um, accidentally take too much off and realize I made the spring too weak. And the bottom part at the spine, I've left a little proud. Just as extra insurance. Okay, here real quick, I thought I'd throw in a quick tip on how I drill holes in my liners. I'm getting these prepared 
for when I um, get the blade and back spring together on my rice fall indicator. Um, I've already did what I'm about to show you on the two liners. Um, and I'm going to put my pattern on. What I do is I take cheap blue painter's tape, tear a short piece off, trim it in half. Try not to trim your fingernails. <laughs> Put one half on my liners, the other half on my pattern, and I put two to three drops of super glue across. It don't take a whole lot. Set my pattern on there where I want it. That looks good. Of course, press it down. Now that has all three of them super glued together. And I can drill my holes with reasonable confidence, knowing that I'm not accidentally going to move one of the holes if I drill the liner separately. I have accidentally got a hole off just a little bit. And that puts pull pressure on the liners. So when you assemble your knife, that can be a reason why your blade wants to squeeze off to one side. So that's just a quick tip on how I do that. Okay. We're over here at the grinder, and real quick before we get started, I wanted to show what I did right here down the side of my platen. I ground in that notch so I can have more room to get around that corner if need be, and that can be very handy. Um, anyways, I got this set up on my rice fall um, and jig I made. Of course, eh, it ain't fancy, but... I need my liner on here to see what I'm doing because, well, the way I made it. Um, and at the moment, the way this is, it is actually fairly close, but I got the back spring probably close to ten thousandths higher than I want it to be, which I did make the spine part of the back spring a little proud, so I'm not going by that right there um, wholeheartedly. Um, I'm going by the blade position and things of that nature. So, to do that, to bring the back spring down, I'm going to be taking material off of the rest part of the tang here. And to finish getting the blade, I need to bring it up just a touch. I will end up needing to take some material off the stop part of the tang right there. Because when I come over here to half stop, my back spring is basically even with the rest area of my tang. I might could take just the tiniest bit off, but right now that is so close, I don't want a chance taking very much off. Because the last thing I personally would want to do is bring the end of my back spring to where the length isn't as wide as my half stop um, it just well it goes against what I would how I'd like to have it um, so I'm going to show real quick just a pass on going on the rest area of the tang as well as stop area to give you an idea of what I'm doing um, and then I will be back when I'm ready to work on the half stop Okay, I've got my grinder laid down horizontal now in preparation of working on the half stop in the closed position. Wanted to show you real quick where I'm at on the open position. As you can see, I've got just the tiniest bit of gap all the way around the end of the um, back spring there at the stop. And it's touching nice and solid up there towards the spine of the tang. And as you can tell, where I've still got the um, back spring proud, 
but it's down in there pretty good now and I got the blade um, where I want it so I have set get the dust off of here I've set my um, gauge on zero since I have it where I want it in the open position so I come over here to half stop and I'm pretty what is that about eight thousandths off so I will show real quick to grind a little bit on this and um, come over here and get my blade off and I ain't gonna show every little bitty thing because it I work it in pretty slow because um, again you can take way too much material off too quick and regret it and regret it um, oh and I'm using a wore out 400 grit belt that way I ain't removing tons of material all at once uh, so but anyways let's do it a little bit show you real quick I use that small wheel because I want a little bit of a radius along the half stop that way when it goes in the half stop it has two points of contact on the back spring and it's a lot more solid of a fit up so I'll be back when I'm ready to work on the close position okay I have the half stop position here where I want it I don't take it all the way down to zero I still leave a good thousands and um, the reason why I do that is when I put the knife under tension um, that gives me room to um, I think I mentioned earlier where I can polish the corners and get a nice finish on the tang um, and that gives me wiggle room because that will take material off and um, I will do that until it gets flush on the back. So, real quick, I will show, demonstrate. Um, grinding on the close position. And as you can see, it's about 11 thousandths too much. So, I'll demonstrate this real quick. Okay, I finished getting everything worked in here. So I was going to show you what I have. Uh, that's how it looks like in the open position. Move the back spring up. You can tell I got a decent transition from the spine over of the liner over to the spine of the blade. Of course, I got that on zero bring it over to half stop like I showed earlier I have it a thousandths proud and whenever I have it in the closed position I've got a decent gap there got plenty of room for the for movement for when it gets under tension and this is about a thousandths and a half proud I reckon anyway that's just a look kind of how I go about getting the blade and back spring fit up um, if you enjoyed the video consider giving it a like and if you want to follow along on my knife making journey consider subscribing appreciate y'all watching and i'll talk to you later